Hello everybody, my name is Francisco de Paula Souza de Mendonça Jr. Uh, I am doctor in history and political cultures at Federal University of Minas Gerais, uh, here at Brazil, with a sandwich internship at Université paris Créteil. Actually, I am co-director of the Center for Studies mm -hmm. on Occidental Esotericism de la UNASUR and founding mem member of Centro Internazionale de Studi Jean Battista de la Porta. I'm also adjunct professor at the Department of History at the Federal University of Santa Maria, Brazil, working at the undergraduate and the postgraduate studies. At UFSM, I created a director the Virtu Medieval and Renaissance History Group. Today, I will present the following conference, and I hope that you enjoy it. And now, I start to read to you. Simplicia Corpora, Platonic Rings, and God, Gian Battista della Porta, and the Nature. The Neapolitan Gian Battista della Porta had dedicated himself to a vast myriad of interests during his lifetime. Today, we will discuss an element that had appeared consistently at his abuses, the nature. De La Porta had as an one of his great objectives in life to understand how the nature works and how to become able to master it. He dedicated himself to, he, to this at his Academia dei Segreti, through the many books wrote by him and even in his later years at his botanical garden. Today, we will discuss how De La Porta explained the, works, the workings of nature and what kind of person he understood that was skilled enough to deal with it. The main source for the present discussion is De La Porta opus called Magia Naturalis Sive de Miraculis Rerum Naturalium or something like natural magic or about the miracles of natural things in a free translation. The book, first published at 1558, wrote at the early years of our author, deals with a large array of subjects, from botanical techniques to optics, passing through alchemy and secret writing. However, the book had as a starting point a detailed discussion of how discussion of how nature was made, how it works, and how to deal with it. Only after establishing these matters, De La Porta started to discuss the other elements as some ways to apply these theoretical reflections about nature. First of all, De La Porta believed that all things that constitute nature were created for God and to him remains connected. This vision conciliates many traditions at one time. The first one, and a little obvious, is the, is the Christian cosmogony. The obvious liaison is the one with, Christian, with, with the Christian cosmogony. The Genesis narrative on how the Christian God created earth and heavens in six days, resting on the seventh, was firmly established at the Italian culture in which De La Porte culture was in which De La Porte was raised. But there are two other worldviews that can be identified at Magia Naturalis. Neoplatonism was a philosophical trend very popular in the intellectual milieu of 16th century Italy. 16th century Italy, excuse me. In a synthetic way, Neoplatonic thinkers assumed there was only one God from whom all the things derived. As said by Plotinus, this one God which he called Nous, was a supreme intelligent, who simultaneously was the origin of the world and also its ruler. Therefore, the Nous was the principle responsible for all the natural movements, all the phenomena that took place in nature, occurred for and by the Nous. Otherwise said, the Nous was the word Sous, so Alma Mundi, one famous reader of Plotinus was Saint Augustine. The last tradition that you can perceive in the Laporta conception of nature 
is as a hermeticism. After Marsilio Ficino's translation of the Corpus Hermeticum around 1463 and first published it in 1471, the interest in the hermeticism was renewed. It was important to point that it is wrongly assumed that the Corpus Hermeticum was not known during the Middle Ages. The already mentioned Augustine of Hippo also read it, read it but with a very negative look. The point is that during medieval times, the Corpus Hermeticum circulated in fragmented ways at Latin Christendom. Just after Ficino translated it from Greek to Latin, the Corpus Hermeticum has some integrality again. The main hermetic idea that was appropriated by humanists came from its uh, cosmogony. As narrated in the Corpus Hermeticum, was the noose, the one that fulfilled his creative desires, created uh, the noose demiurge, embodied him with his demiurgic powers. After that, the noose demiurge created the planets, and through them it was created all the things that composed nature. In a later moment, the noose created the human being, which, which was also inf infused with demiurgic powers. So, in the entire created world, only humans had the ability to create, which, which gave them a div uh, divine nature. The main goal of Hermeticism is to uh, retrieve this divine nature, and by this way he acquired the command of nature, and, the, the, and some direct contact this one God. As we can see, the relation between Neoplatonism and Hermeticism is clear, once both of them assumed that the world was consequence of the actions of a new, uh, unique God, even if it uses intermediaries. This is also a connection with Christianity, because the centrality of the divine being has origin and driving force of all things. The humanists from the 16th century Reread Christian ideas influenced by the Neoplatonism and the Hermeticism in an effort to renew the Christian religion. Also, was very interesting to them the idea that the human being could be able to reconnect to some inner divinity, which allowed them to simultane simultaneously take control over nature and open a direct channel to God. Jean Baptiste de la Porta was aware of all this discussion and dialogue, 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 dialogue with it, excuse me. Besides his proximity with the Hermeticism, Della Porta disagrees in a fundamental point, the existence of a new demiurge. To him, the entire creation of nature was his use of the work of one God alone, the Christian one. This way, the only power over humanity and the nature was the one derived dire directly from God himself, in direct and reciprocal relation. So, De La Porta felt free to say that, by the influence of the stars, he placed in each creature, and I am quoting him, its form, full of vigor and virtue. Here we have De La Porta an image of his work, and so we are. Once there was no intermediation between God and his creation, all the forms had only one possible source. So, God became the driving force of the creation of all things, just using the heavenly bodies as demanded by his superior will. To explain how the world by consequence the nature gets moving, De La Porta recurred to the platonic rings, the most elementary principle that organizes and endows movement to the sensible world was the idea that God was the beginning of all things, the one that ordered everything, connecting all. I quote De La Porta, here then is the connection of things, the order and the disposition, 
seven divine providence and where we can see that all those inferior things which are governed first and by order proceed from God himself and now uh, they vir virtue and efficiency to him for God as Macrobius said who is the first and principal cause of things and their very source through the fecundity of his majesty created the understanding and the soul which in part develops reason. De La Porta said that God institutes a fundamental natural law, saying that the superior must govern the inferior. Once he also said that humankind was created as his image and resemblance. We could infer that uh, the human being was the one chosen to rule the sensible world. Therefore, the possession of reason is the key element that gives to humans the control of their nature. If, for hermeticism, this government derived from some inner divinity, for our author is reason, the divine gift that allows it. Since De La Porta established the origin of nature, the force that, the force that put in movement and how it is organized. His next step was discusses the elements that are fundamental to its composition. First of all, all the things in nature are reducible to the four elemental forces, fire, air, water and earth, each of them with its own qualities. Here, De La Porta di dialoged closely with the Aristotelian scheme to understand nature. Therefore, fire was the purest of all elements and the lighter one, condition that establishes it on heavens. There was the element more close to fire but heavier than it. Once it condensate, clouds were formed and rain comes after, bring water to the equation. Earth, the, le the least the last and heavier of all then, was also the solid impenetrable base to everything. All the elements were in nature balance, since the wise nature, and I quote uh, De La Porta, the wise nature, by an admirable and opportune measure, composed the architecture of this machine. Each of elements had two qualities inside itself, combining hotness, coldness, dryness and moistness. From these combinations, they constitute relations between them and could be sympathetic or antipathetic, being this the way that which the godly influence put on movement the natural mechanism. That way, fire was hot and dry, there hot and moist, the earth cold and dry, and the water cold and moist. The person who wants to master the nature needs to operate by a careful combination of the sympathetic and antipathetic relations between natural elements and its qualities. De La Porta gave us an example of how this process works. I quote, little by little, fire is converted into air by heat air into water by moisture, water into earth by coldness, and earth is joined to fire by dryness. Here then he how, is how they proceed. De La Porta affirmed that movement is the basis to the world's equilibrium, the dynamic and perpetual nature of the relation of the elements guarantee the driving force to make nature last. The transformations between elements essential to the natural nature's life will face more or less defiance taking account of the proximity between the elemental qualities. For example, it will be easier pass from fire to air, both of them hot, then from fire to water, one hot uh, and the other cold. So the sympathetic relations between the four elements, fire, air, earth, water and its qualities, hotness, coldness, dryness, moistness, uh, were the base for the natural operations, central pillars of natural magic. Having all these elements presented, 
della porta introduce de simplicia compor, corpora, or simple bodies. In his own words, now the seeds of all things are the elements, in other words, the simple bodies, which are the material principle of natural bodies, subject to continual changes and continual agitation, which fill this entire sublunary world. In fact, the Simplicia Corpora were understood by the Laporta as the, most, as the most fundamental parts in which a natural element could be divided. They were formed in the process of sympathetic relations that put nature in movement and also were the material element through which the power of God circulated in the sensible world. De La Porta presented them to the reader as a kind of uh, natural principle, like a chemical principle. The Simplicia Corpora were some kind of monad, once they are not composed and for this naturally indivisible. These simple bodies would correspond to the occult qualities present in all natural things, on account of which the sympathetic relations of the natural world occurred. These simple bodies would have various supports and vectors whose guarantee their efficacy in acting at the natural world, like herbs and pures. So, to operate through them, it would be necessary the knowledge of which Simplicia Corpora was linked to which acute quality and which natural subject it, uh, and in which natural subject it could be found. So, to operate through the natural relations that put the world at movement, it would be needed to know how some groups of Simplicia Corpora actuates before putting them in action. For example, the velocity in which, uh, in which each of them reacts or how the heavenly body's movement could affect them. Affect them. The success of natural action, like the ones promised, promised by the natural magic, relied on deeply knowledge of it. A delicate operation by nature dealing with the simple bodies should be protected by several essential precautions, prec precautions for its success, the first of which is the care with the specific of its preparation. Despite the engines of the complex sympathetic plot that would move the relationships between the various acute virtues of the natural world, the Simplicia Corpora could also have its effects altered by it. So, care should be taken to adapt each operation to the desired end, and for that, only the appropriate simple bodies should be activated, and, it, and in the most appropriate way. It would not be very prudent, in this way, to prepare a compound to treat the problems of the head in order to remedy heart ailments. The reflections over nature presented by Delaporte in his Magia Naturalis had a very specific goal, as said before. He wanted to understand natural world to find a way to master it. After we saw his vision on how nature was created, organized and works, is relevant discuss by which way the Laporta taught to tame and use the sympathetic relations between the Simplicia Corpora and rule the sensible world. This powerful tool was magic. Giambattista della Porta made a taxonomy of the types of magic, Guetia, Teurgi, uh, mathematical uh, magic, necromancy, divination, and an array of other types. But we will center our attention on one of the categories presented by him, the natural magic. Defined for the Laporta as the supreme science, he described it, it like this. This magic, endowed with considerable power, abounds in occult mysteries, and makes known the things that lie in the bosom of nature, with their qualities and their properties. It is the summit of all philosophy. Miracles would be correct and timely applied natural magic. 
according to La Porta. This, because this art will not be this art will not be understood as superior to nature, but as said by De La Porta, and I quote, do not believe that the effects of natural magic are anything other than the works of nature. Art is a slave of nature, it puts itself diligently at its service. So, natural magic, as all kinds of magical techniques, has not the objective to make the individual to abandon the sensible world instead of it. The supreme goal was to enable the human being become one with the nature. With nature. De La Porta saw magic, including natural magic, as the same as various other fields of knowledge dedicated to understanding how humankind and nature related between them. Like medicine, magic could be used to appease the ailment that, tor that tormented uh, humans because thought it was possible to access and act over the sympathetic relations that put motion on the universe. However, to deal with a delicate as powerful art will be required a special kind of individual. At this point, De La Porta introduces the importance of the magus to tame and to instrumentalize the nature. As many others uh, uh, authors of his time, Jean Baptiste De La Porta presented the magi as a wise person. He endorsed a historical list presented uh, in authors like Apuleius and Porphyrius that started with the first association between wisdom and the magicians. Uh, occurred among the Persians. Following this train of thought, for the Greek magicians are were the philosophers, for the Indians, excuse me, uh, the gymnosophists, and to the Hebrew, the Kabbalists, and so on. This way, magic was perceived by De La Porta as the natural tool for humankind deals with nature, turning it in something inherent to human societies, and also naturally associated to a very selected group, the sages. De La Porta traced the genealogy to the great representative sages in each important human culture. Therefore, he presented to the reader a lineage starting with Zoroaster and passing through names like the Indian Tespion, Hermes Trismegistus, Buddha, Abadis, Numa Pompilius and others. In this way, De La Porta connected him, uh, himself to the idea of Aprisca Theologia, as present to us by Daniel Pick and Walker. Otherwise said, there was a selected few men chosen by God to prepare the soil where Christianity could properly bloom. They prepared humanity to, to the arriving of Christ and his message, so the definitive saving message could prosper. This was the strategy adopted by the Christian Magi, term coined by Francis Yates, to connect the esoteric traditions blossoming at the European 16th century and the Christian tradition. De La Porta was part of this effort to renew the Christianity by infusing it with magical conceptions. The Jean Baptiste de la Porta defined the Magus this way. Such a person investigated the causes and the beginnings and the first elements of things and exposes to the eyes of all the wonderful riches that come from them. It indicates the reciprocal connection and conjunction of the elements, whence the source of cause proceeds and whence they and or death derives. De La Porta described the Magus as a workman, for his labor was natural manually, but, but also as a sage, as he dedicated himself to decipher the secrets that put nature on movement. The Magus needed to be an artisan with wisdom and a sage gifted with inventiveness. This specific combination of qualities implied that the magus could not be idle, 
because nature do not unravel its secrets to the lazy and the, and the ignorant, as said by Epicarmus. We also need to recover an important idea presented above by the Laporta. The Magus was a humble servant of nature and not the other way around. Eugenio Garin precisely defined the relation between the Renaissance Magus and nature. If a humble servant was deeply aware of his master habits, he could put this on the move to fulfill his personal agenda. The Magus was capable to perform miracles with nature only because he knew deeply how it works, its inner sympathetic relations, how to carefully deal with the intricate net in which the Simplicia Corpora were inserted. By way of conclusion, there is no doubt that the Neapolitan Giabattista della Porta was very concerned with understanding and acting over nature throughout his life. He approached nature by different angles and perspectives. In his opus, Magia Naturalis, even being a product of his early age, was one of his most important contributions to this topic. As we hope to have shown, this book represents a very important effort to undercover the hidden mechanism that constitutes and put, and put natural movement. He constructed a, very, constructed a very interesting train of thought where God was the forger, the principle, and also the driving force of the sensible world. It could be perceived by understanding how the sympathetic relations between the acute qualities of nature manifest itself in the simplicia corpora, the most indivisible part of the worldly things. He also stated that the only manner to comprehend nature and also operate it is through natural magic, the only arts capable of such feat. Therefore, the Magus was the only one skillful enough to reunite wisdom and master shift to know the movements of nature so deeply that he could put it on course to perform miracles. That way, according to Giambattista della Porta, the, the ancient sage was right because only the sage will master the stars. And I have to Thank you all of you for listening uh, and also apologize myself for my bad English and I deeply hope to, ve to see you all very soon. See you later. <laughs>